The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador, the Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who was she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh. Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? Andraste's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. The Inquisition will have plenty of time for that between finding the Divine's murderer and sealing the breach. Busy as we are, I do have a question for you, if you've a moment. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? I tell the Chantry I was saved by circumstance, not divine intervention. Yet, as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Thank you. I understand you were instrumental in garnering the assistance of the rebel mages. It is well done. And I pray this Inquisition fares better than the Chantry in its handling of magic. You disapprove of something the Chantry did? Are you allowed to do that? That largely depends upon one's company. While surrounded by those declared heretics already, I am safe enough. In some ways, Andraste had the simpler task. Magic should serve man, and not rule over him. That tells us what should be, but it does not tell us how to get there. So many times the methods of men have undone the spirit of their goals. Once you have sealed the breach, we shall see whether this Inquisition is truer to the Chantry, or its own namesake. Is there anything I can do to help you or your people? My healers would benefit from more supplies. We have run short of even common goods with so many wounded. If you could deliver this list and the items on it to Quartermaster Thren, she could get us what we need. It may not seem like much, but it would enable my healers to save many lives. Farewell. Make her go with you. Heaven has been filled with silence. I knew then, and crossed my heart with shame. 
If Fiona and her malcontents are joining us as allies, we need to be prepared. Abominations are inevitable. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. These mages joined us freely. We don't need Templars to contain them. My dear, I don't think you've grasped the magnitude of the situation. The veil is broken, and the raw power of the Fade rushes out like floodwaters through a shattered levee. You know as well as I do that mages attract demons where the veil is thin. And if demons can walk our world with no blood magic to summon them, how safe do you think our allies are? There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. You have a low opinion of your fellow mages. It's not a matter of opinion, my dear. I have a close relationship with reality. Many of our colleagues do not. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. You're preaching to the choir, Vivienne. Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? The circle has to be restored if we want to keep the peace. That's comforting to hear, but you'll find opposition to the idea even among friends. It's something to consider, my dear. Have you seen Enchanter Vivienne? That's the picture of what a circle maid should be. Apothecary Adon can have those supplies for you by tomorrow, it's arrogant. Quartermaster. It is it's not arrogant to be unafraid. Reports of fade rifts and demons keep coming. The people are terrified, and it's only getting worse. The only thing that will calm their fears now is the hope that someone out there can save them. You have to be that someone. No one else has any power over the rifts. Seal them. Your legend will spread, and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. In Redcliffe. You sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice. And still noble. And I would do it again. Why do you want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. Anything I should know? Altegan has returned to Redcliffe Castle and resumed his duties as Lord. The people are returning, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, our show of support for the mages has angered many. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. They say you spent some time in Lothering. Did you know the champion? We spoke a few times. I seldom left the Chantry, and we never became more than casual acquaintances. I saw more of the Hog twins. Bethany in particular. She would spend time in meditation at the Chantry, and she seemed to like my stories. The other one, the young man, he was a little surly. I did encounter the champion again later in Kirkwall. 
Those were terrible times. Was this when the Chantry was destroyed? No, that happened later. But even then, the news coming out of Kirkwall was disheartening. There were some in Val Rayo who wanted the Divine to declare an exalted march on Kirkwall. Justina sent me there to see if that could be avoided, to gather evidence to calm those agitating for war. I guess it didn't matter in the end. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. The Inquisition has the numbers to track down all this lyrium and destroy it. I hope so. I don't want to think about what happens if it starts a plague. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? We can't know what's coming. Best not to get too comfortable. I can't disagree with that. But maybe you should try to relax while you can. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. And you've heard nothing of this Elder One before, in any of your investigations? Nothing. I'm sorry. No, it's taken all of us by surprise. We must... I don't know. He compromised the Rebel Mages, and is likely responsible for the disappearance of the Templars. And we know nothing about him. We will soon enough. Carter, if you're free later, would you like to have a drink at the tavern? Are you courting a knife here, Scout Pauline? No, no, I... I don't know. I used to drink with the soldiers. But I can't talk with them anymore, not really. You've seen enough pieces to have some idea of the size of the game we're playing. Yes, and... I'm sorry. I just... you understand. This elder one... There's no one I can talk to. I'll be in the tavern this evening. Perhaps you could buy me a drink. Make sure you take a bath first. Here, tell Mother Giselle that this is as much as I can spare. Make her bless you. Ian, better. Mages are ready to approach the breach. I pray this will be enough to close it. You weren't happy with how I brought in the mages. You have a problem with me as well. Of course not. I have no intention of endangering your alliance, but I must ensure the safety of those here. That concern extends to the mages. 
They are putting themselves at risk for the Inquisition, as are you. Any precautions taken are meant to aid you, nothing more. I hope you will accept them as such. Is there anything I should know? Not at present. I'd like to know more about the Templars. What would you like to know? Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The Knight Captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. 13? It's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the Order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The Order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Prior to the Conclave, I'd only encountered Templars in the Circle. Do they do anything besides guard mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. You've made it clear that you consider mages a threat. Any mage can be. I won't pretend otherwise. I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession, at least. I know how I spent my time in the Circle, but what was a typical day for a Templar? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a Circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the Circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence. But they're watching you just as closely. We would spend all day with Templars, and yet they rarely spoke to us. A habit often mistaken for coldness, I'm sure. But we are expected to keep a certain distance from our charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing? There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of lyrium and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. Physical? Why... <clears throat> why would you... That's not expected. Templars can marry. Although there are rules around it, and the Order must grant permission. Some may choose to give up more to prove their devotion, but it's not required. Me? I've, um, uh, no, I've taken no such vows. Make us breath. Can we speak of something else? That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. I 
what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do, complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. You would have done differently, I suppose? Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. You're flattering me. I'm not. This always happens. Nobody ever takes my meaning. <laughs> you should see your face. I'm thinking less flattering things now. <laughs> <sighs> Let's hope the breach has your sense of humor. Just like you asked, Flissa. I see. No trouble. Master Harriet said I should go back right away. I'll make her you him. You were the herald of Andraste. And you were sent to show us we were wrong to be afraid of the mages. I have always respected magic. I think the maker blessed your rebellion. And I mean, I'm Flissa. Can I get you a drink? Magic can be dangerous, but it's just a tool, like any other. Yes, exactly. I've always said that. Like a hammer or a sword. It tears open the sky. As I said, I'm Flissa. The Inquisition soldiers needed a place to unwind, so Leliana brought me in to set up a tavern. Nothing fancy, but it's safer for the soldiers than looking for trouble in some village. You said Leliana asked you to run an Inquisition tavern. How did you meet her? Some luck, mainly. I managed an inn back in Denouin. So when I heard interesting gossip, I passed word to Liliana. Sometimes it was helpful. She asked if I wanted to own my own tavern, and I said yes. I didn't know she meant this. Can free the what can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harris is the Inquisition's snick. Whatever he can make you, Thren, the quartermaster, can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segret. His prices aren't too high. Yet? Oh, there's also my name. He studies beasts to things, as I understand. Farewell. Goodbye. Well, that's mages all over. So many robes, I bet all of Ferelden lost their curtains. I'll just be the other side of Haven, just in case. Thank you. 
Do you have a problem with our new allies? With mages? No problem with mages. You're fine, right? My problem is magic. If mages sat on their hands, everything would be fine. I mean, yay, freedom. Great for them. Over there, away from me. What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which, the ones who do things or the ones who give orders? What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's crammed up a thousand years ago. Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as soft and tough as she plays, right? Tough, though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. What do you think about our spy master, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. I swear I've seen her too. Or heard she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. Knows her business, if you have to have it. And Cullen. I suppose if you want a jack boot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice hair. What about Dorian? <laughs> He's fun. Could lose a bit more to Vinta. What's your opinion of Vivienne? She's a bitch, but she knows. She better. Any thoughts about Warden Blackwall? He's too good, right? Like to see him out of that uniform. Not like that. We'll talk later. Good, right? I'll be here. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? I take it you don't agree. On the contrary, I approve. Heartily. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to... Well, be like mages back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many mages back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the Sun. Templars. Proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. But still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinti, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course I believe you. The moment I saw you, I thought, there's a man who knows quality. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. 
We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Devinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Devinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Devinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters. I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Devinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. It occurs to me that you're a mage. That just occurred to you? I meant, you must have been part of the circle of magi in the sun. Meaning, you were locked away like a criminal, at least until you rebelled. It's such a bizarre notion to me. There are worse things than being kept in the circles. Death, starvation, being hunted by rabid mobs? Yes, I can imagine. Some would say Tevinter is hardly better, depending on which mage you ask. Still, it's so utterly foreign. It's more surprising that everyone would take the idea of a mage inquisitor so... calmly. Maybe it's not calm. Maybe the Antivan crows are swimming in gold from all the contracts on your life. Good luck with that, by the way. Grand fun being the one in charge. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy crown? <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium, exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. 
I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families buy madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes, and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinta legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor sods don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a quaestor isn't a good thing? I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. But let me ask you something else. Of course. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own divine? You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry. Or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them. For the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The circles are in command. There are circles of magi in the Imperium? We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use lyrium? Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So, the Imperial Divine is always a man? All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female Magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be Divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the Sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the South. 
Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. You don't seem like the religious sort, to be honest. If you define religious as sitting in a chantry and listening to a blithering hen tell you how to live, then no. If you define it as believing in the possibility that something larger than yourself exists, then yes, by all means. The world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I'd think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't, of course. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Canari for what, 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, you've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Orlesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. Not at all. That's what any Magister would tell you. They'd be convincingly offended by the notion too. Of course, what people call blood magic here, and what we consider blood magic, are two different things. What's considered actual blood magic in Tevinter? Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant, what's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summoning. None of that is done, not officially. Behind closed doors, it's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge, a leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out in the room, to put it bluntly. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did, long ago. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off. Too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. Most of them are probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. Of course. I do. And I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. All very patriotic. Meanwhile, that magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learn to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariahood. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's... how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. You think slaves like it that way? 
Don't be ridiculous. I didn't say they like it. It's all most of them know. In the South, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? Is that what you call it? Treated poorly? Abuse heaped upon those without power isn't limited to Tevinter, my friend. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I should go. I do rather like watching you leave. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? I've been to the Fade before. I'd know it. Point taken. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witness. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest, failed to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One? You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. Perhaps another time. You're back. And in one piece. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children.
Any word? Nothing yet. Right. Let's see what we have. At your service. 